Welcome to the Early Childhood Career Video Series. The DOE Early Learning Team created these videos to highlight a few of the many roles in the field of early childhood education. We hope that you enjoy meeting the folks included in today's video and learning how they support young children and families. The finale to the week of the young child is Family Friday. There isn't a better way to end this celebration than by paying tribute to the first teachers in every child's life, their parents. There is no job more rewarding and challenging than being a parent. Hats off to all the moms, dads, and family members who care for the hearts and minds of little ones every day. We want you to know that you are not alone in this journey. There are many professionals in our state who provide support to children and families in a variety of ways. You will meet some of them in today's video. Meg Swanson works for the Office of Child and Family Supports, a part of the Department of Health and Human Services in Augusta. Hi there, welcome Meg. Hi. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I just have a few questions to ask you about your career in early childhood education. Uh, before we do that, I'll introduce myself real quick. My name is Nicole Medor. I'm the early childhood specialist at the Maine Department of Education and I work on the early learning team. Um, and I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, your position and your role currently. Absolutely. So my name is Meg Swanson and I am the Family and Community Engagement Program Manager for the Early Care and Education Unit in the Office of Child and Family Services for DHHS. And uh, my role primarily is to oversee a program called First for Me, which will be a pilot program starting later this year. Uh, and I also oversee some community-based programming that uh, is for youth experiencing hardship across the state. Awesome. So what positions or, you know, careers have you held prior to this position? Sure. Uh, quite a few. Uh, I started as a youth director at a YMCA in Massachusetts right after college. I have been an assistant camp director for 165 child summer camp. I have been an admissions counselor for a higher, a higher ed institution. And most recently, before I came to state service, I was a school counselor for a pre-K-8 community school uh, for the past five years. Wow, that's awesome. Do you remember, Meg, what drew you to working with young children all those years ago? So life is so funny because when I think back on my journey, uh, it felt really erratic, you know, moving from place to place in different positions. Um, but really, when I look back, it's pretty linear. Um, I've always worked with birth to young adult and really had a passion for uh, child development and human development. Um, so my focus, I, I really, when I went to college, I thought I was going to be an athletic director. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, and about halfway through, my focus changed to human services. Um, and so then I went and worked in a nonprofit uh, and then jumped to higher ed and admissions counseling. And when I was there, I really loved the college and career advisement piece. So I made the decision to go back to school, get my master's and become a school counselor, thinking that that was the track that I really, really liked. But when I got into being a school counselor, I just fell in love with the whole student, um, working with families, working with educators, just becoming part of the whole support ecosystem in a school. Um, so one of the things that really ended up being kind of heartbreaking when I worked in the, in the pre-K-8 school um, was how vast the difference was for kiddos coming into kindergarten and the tools that some had and some didn't and how it really impacted their experience and um, working with educators, working with families, everybody was working so hard to, to bridge those gaps um, or bridge those differences, but it was really hard to see. And so, um, and then the pandemic hit and it made things even worse. And so I really started to have this calling to really go on the other side of kindergarten and really work towards using my life's energy towards, you know, systems and supports for families and providers and uh, in that early care field and that, that place. Um, and so coming over to ECE, it's just such a vast field full of dedicated and amazing professionals. I just feel so lucky to have gotten an opportunity for my, for my path and my journey to show, to go here. Awesome. So what do you think is the best aspect of working with young children and their families, in your opinion? 
I absolutely love connecting with families, learning about their stories. Um, every family might be different, but every family loves their kids um, and just wants the best for them. Uh, I also love the honesty and resiliency of young children. Uh, they just make me laugh and they just keep you honest <laughs> with things um, and their unconditional love and excitement for, for the little things. It really, it really makes my heart happy and it keeps me young. Well, thanks, Meg. I really appreciate what you're doing in your position right now at DHHS. They're so lucky to have you. And um, we love collaborating with your team over at DOE. So we um, really look forward to our continued collaboration communication to improve the field of early childhood for everybody. Absolutely. It's an exciting time. Thanks for having me. Johnny James is the executive director of the Western Maine Play Museum in Wilton. My name is Johnny James and I'm the executive director for the Western Maine Play Museum, which is a children's museum in Wilton, Maine. Um, and we are recently uh, opened in 2019. So we've had a very adventurous uh, first few years and <laughs> we opened in August of 2019. So um, we've been really just kind of plugging along and, and uh, growing and you know, learning as we go. Great. Now, prior to opening the museum, what what positions have you held? What was your career path that led you to this point? Um, it's probably a fairly non-traditional career path. Um, <laughs> uh, I started working with children when I was, well, I grew up in a house with lots of kids. So I'm one, I'm the oldest of five. So um, being around young children is second nature. Um, uh, I started working with as a camp counselor and then a camp director for high schoolers later on um, in my young adult life. And uh, and then from there, I worked for a mission at the Eastward and that um, is based in Farmington, Maine. Uh, they uh, had a really great uh, youth connection, um, which stemmed from working my work with summer the summer camp um so I was their youth coordinator for a few years so that was sort of my first uh work as a as a as an adult and my first work um with youth uh and then um I had my own children and left the workforce for a little while uh and then I joined it uh back working in retail management so that's sort of where the rest of the um skills came into play for uh running a museum <laughs> great well that that is a more diverse work path which is really interesting what drew you to working with young children what made this the next logical step in your journey I've always kind of just felt really comfortable working with children and um, I just really feel like they, uh, they're they a great expression of humanity. You know, they just, they're, the kids are just, they're really honest and you kind of get what they really, how they really feel. Um, and I've just always felt really comfortable with that. And my vibe kind of matches their vibe, I feel like. And uh, um so it's just always been a um, an easy path for me. It's it's you know hasn't had a lot of um, barriers. That's great. So if you had to describe the best part of the work that you're doing right now with children and families, what would it be? So I think that the best part uh, probably is is kind of beyond just playing with kids, having kids around, and you know having fun. I think that um, this museum was created. Um, in a way that that uh, is really, really, it's really special and um, really important for rural communities like ours um, to make sure that kids have really high quality experiences. It's great to see people's brains change a little bit from the moment they walk through the door to when they're leaving. It's really fun to see, um, you know, a, a play is in our is in our name. So it's not just a, and people are like play and museum, like how do these things uh, go together, you know? And uh, some people will do a walkthrough and um, and see everything and then go back and, and decide, okay, I think I get it now. And I'm gonna, you know, build a fort in the building room. And um, 
And some people just dive right in and they're like, you know, grownups are crawling on the floor with a little, with their littles and, um, and playing right away. So it, some people, it does take a little bit of time for them to warm up. Grownups and, and kids alike, it, it takes them a few minutes to kind of get comfortable and, and, um, and really just kind of let go. And then when um, they finally do, it's, it's a really fun. It's Maria Richardson is the child and youth librarian at the Kenny Bunk Free Library. My name is Maria Richardson. I am the children's librarian and head of youth services at Kennebunk Free Library in Kennebunk, Maine. And in that role, I'm able to do all kinds of things. I get to do lots of programming. So I do story times, and then we have regular monthly programs, after school type things. And then we have some special programs too. Um, I get to kind of prepare and plan the summer reading program. Love doing that. Um, I get to choose all the books that we have in our library and do some outreach too with some schools in the area. And can you talk a little bit about what led you to where you are today? Sure. So I got my library degree at the University of Rhode Island in Kingston, Rhode Island. And while I was there, I did some internship type work. And after I graduated from URI, I went to Florida because my family was living there. And I got a job at a library in adult services. Basically, it was a very small library. So we had um, someone who was the library director we had a children's librarian and then we had me. In being in that role and seeing the children's librarian and the things that she did, and also having the opportunity to sort of reflect on my past and how important books and reading and all those adventures that I took as a child through books, it really um, kind of spoke to me about where I thought I could have the greatest impact and where really my heart was, you know, lying in the library world. So I saw the position in Kennebunk. I wanted to come back to Maine. That's where I grew up. It was always home and jumped right on it and was fortunate enough to get that position. What do you see as the best part of working with, with kiddos? What do you enjoy mm -hmm. most? Well, I love um I love doing programming for the kids I love really paying attention to what their interests are and then sort of providing programs to expand on that so that's really that's really great I love seeing them enjoy themselves and learn more about their interests I love um finding that one book that's just right for that child and being able to hand it to them and see their eyes light up Grace Emery Fry is a licensed home child care provider at Tucasa Family Child Care in Raymond. Well, happy week of the young child. I'm excited today to be talking to Grace and I'm going to hand it over to her to introduce herself and a little bit about her family child care program that she owns and operates. I'm Grace. I own Tucasa Child Care in Raymond. Tu casa means your home in Spanish, um, and that is how it feels to all of the children in Tu casa. Um, it is warm, it is safe, it is comfortable, um, and Tu casa child care, we spend a lot of time outdoors and spend a lot of time um, working on relationships with each other, um, and, and it is amazing to watch how the outdoors helps foster these deep relationships that we have with each other in Tucasa. I love that. And I know I can vouch for your beautiful outdoor space, having visited your program before. Now coming, um, you know, coming into your educator role that you were in now, um, what were some of the previous uh, positions or your career path that brought you here? Um, previously, I worked um, with older children in a charter school and in, in in Fiddlehead, um, and I was a teacher's assistant and a Span Spanish teacher working with children from K to five. Um, and I discovered there that I really loved working with the younger children. Um, 
getting into exploration and the, the theatrics of being young and, and curious. Um, and that is how I came to um, pre-K in my own program. Yeah. And what made you decide to take that step into bringing a, a program onto your own property and, and, you know, around your own home? Um, really discovering that um, I could give more freedom to the children in my community to explore outdoors um, and really focus in on play-based learning. I love that. And so what would you say, you know, day in, day out, what is the best aspect of your job? I would say connecting with the children um, and connect with each other and also really learning from them what what makes them tick throughout the day. Um, and every day it's a little bit different, but really, really being present with the children and with their families has, has to be my favorite part. Oh, that's so wonderful to hear. And I think that that is such an important element for the families and children in your care, too. And I want to thank you for the job you do for, you know, welcoming and inviting children into your home and space as part of your family. I'm sure that is something that is comforting for all children and families in your care and, and who receive your education. So thank you for joining me today and have a happy week of the young child. Thank you for having me. We hope that you enjoyed meeting the individuals in today's video and learning about how they support children and families. If you're interested in learning more about positions working with young children, please reach out to a member of the DOE Early Learning Team. This is the last video in our series. If you've missed earlier episodes, you can find them in the playlist.